the U.S. hardliners who wanted to colonize Cuba through a war with Spain would have concluded that the sinking of the USS main battleship was the work of Spain and they would have desperately wanted to wage war with Spain for their region. However, the U.S. investigation team announced at the end of the March that, as a result of the investigation, the ship sank due to a mine explosion. It was not possible to specify who attacked intentionally. In the end, the difference between the two countries was clearly revealed, and public opinion in the United States began to cry for revenge. The slogan that came out at this time was Remember the Main, which is the origin of the later Remember the Pearl Harbor. In fact, the cause of the sinking of the USS main battleship has not been accurately identified until now, more than a century later. This fact is said to be the thing that both the United States and Spain agree on. Various opinions have been suggested, such as the mine theory, torpedo theory, Call the party spontaneous ignition theory, boiler explosion theory, intentional explosion theory, and the theory of ammunition detonation due to a packaging mistake. Opinions continue to diverge depending on the era and subject of investigation. However, the general consensus was that it was unlikely that Spain, which could not afford to wage a war with the United States at the time, would intentionally attack. Spanish naval officers actually rescued the American Captain Colonel Sixby and his crew from the sinking battleship. Despite the dangerous situation in which ammunition continued to explode on the sinking battleship, Spanish soldiers actively rescued American soldiers regardless of the risk. For this reason, Captain Sigsby, in his first report from his home country, requested that the culprit be not hastily identified as the Spanish Navy. This position required courage, because in a situation where anti-Spanish sentiment was rampant in the United States, if you sided with Spain even a little, you would be socially buried in an instant. Fortunately, Colonel Sigsby returned to the front lines after the outbreak of war, was promoted to Major General and received the promotional transport to Admiral. Later, he spent his last years relatively gloriously with a park and sea area named after him and was buried in Arlington National Cemetery after his death. First, in 1971, it was concluded that an explosion in the boiler room was the cause of the disaster, and in 1998, a National Geographic investigation was conducted to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the USS Maine battleship explosion. In this investigation, it was confirmed that the hull was bent inward and the ship was presumed to have sunk due to an external impact that was presumed to be a mine explosion. In 2002, it was concluded that the explosion was caused by a fire in a coal deposit caused by spontaneous combustion, similar to the conclusion of the Spanish side in the past. Another hypothesis is that mines for harbor defense were accidentally lost and they then drifted and exploded when approaching the USS Maine battleship. 
This theory is supported by the fact that the iron plate was bent inward according to several subsequent investigations and that there was no reason for Spain to intentionally sink the USS main battleship, but there is still no conclusive evidence. In addition, there is a theory that this incident was a self-inflicted attack by the United States as a pretext to cause a war, but this possibility also lacks grounds. The main ship had been commissioned in 1895 and was only a three-year-old battleship, and at the time, the U.S. had only six battleships including the USS Maine. Battleships cannot be produced overnight, and the U.S. was trying to start a war right away. And the strategic loss was great because the battleship, which was the main force of the Navy, blew up. Anyway, at the time of the incident, the United States attributed this incident to Spain and used it as a pretext for war. Yellow journalism began to cry out for war and then public opinion exploded. Yellow journalism is a media practice that loses sight of its purpose to inform and only heats up competition for sales, aggressively and sensationally distorting facts, and publishing provocative material at random. The term refers to the state of being very out of control, such as writing a fictional novel that is commonly understood as not being based on facts. On April 11th, the President asked the Congress to approve intervention, and the U.S. Congress voted on the 19th to absolutely support Cuba's independence and to do everything in its power to help this cause de facto declaring war. Spain, which received this message, then declared war on the United States on April 23rd, and the Spanish-American War began. The heart of the USS main battleship was salvaged by U.S. authority in 1911. The bottom of the boat was not examined closely. Although investigators concluded that the external cause was an accident. Then, in 1912, they took the wrecked ship out to the sea and just sank it. The outcome of this war was decided from the beginning of the war. At the time, the United States did not have as much experience in war compared to Britain and France, which could be called the first imperialist countries. However, the United States was a country with advanced technology that had quickly achieved the Industrial Revolution and was a powerful country with a high potential for development due to its abandoned population and resources. On the other hand, Spain was already in the process of decline, having lost most of its huge overseas colonies in Latin America, such as Mexico, Chile, Argentina, and Peru in the early 19th century. To compare a nation to a human being, the United States was a young man at his peak with muscles that had just grown large, while Spain was a weak and senile old man. It was a fight between a young man full of strength and a crooked old man who had no strength, so the winner was already decided from the start. America's war targets were primarily in the Caribbean, especially Cuba. 
On June 6, the U.S. Navy first entered Guantanamo Bay, which is the closest harbor to Florida, and bleached the fort. On the 22nd of the same month, the U.S. Army Fifth Corps landed east of Santiago de Cuba without meeting resistance. The advancing United States Army attacked by surprise in the El Caney and San Juan Hill orders of battle on July 1st and completely destroyed the Spanish Army. Then, joining the Cuban Independence Army, the United States captured Santiago, an important city, on July 17th, and captured 11, 500 Spanish soldiers. This victory effectively dissipated Spanish military power on the island of Cuba. Spain hurriedly dispatched a fleet to Cuba to confront the United States but had to exclude all its main ships in order to defend its mainland. So in the end, the Spanish fleet was captured by the United States Navy while fleeing just before the fall of Santiago and was totally destroyed, effectively giving the United States control of the Caribbean Sea The United States forces, which had occupied the island of Cuba and gained control of the Caribbean Sea, were not satisfied and moved further east. Puerto Rico, a Spanish province at the eastern end of the Caribbean Sea, was their new target. On July 25th, the U.S. Army mobilized a large fleet and landed a ground force at Guanica, Puerto Rico. Again, the U.S. Army, aided by anti-Spanish guerrilla forces, won the Spanish Army's surrender after several battles and quickly occupied the island. This fight resulted in the expulsion of Spanish power from America. It had been 406 years since Christopher Columbus had landed in the Bahamas. But America wasn't satisfied with the Caribbean. In fact, in addition to the Caribbean, the U.S. was also continuously pushing for advancement into the Pacific Ocean. This effort was because of a series of expansion policies based on the belief of manifest destiny. From its beginning, the United States was a country that had started out in the east of the continent and expanded steadily to the west. As long as the American Indians were expelled, and even the western part of North America fell into the hands of the United States. There was nowhere else to go but the sea. In response, the United States constantly tried to expand its territory by dispatching fleets to the Pacific Ocean and was able to make Hawaii a dependent territory. They were still not satisfied and sent fleets to already known Asian countries. Japan's Kurofune incident, Joseon's General Sherman incident, Shinmi Yangyong, and the United States expedition to Korea were also part of the process. By 1895, at the time of the Spanish-American War, the situation had changed dramatically. At the time, the Sino-Japanese War broke out in Asia as well. The location where the U.S. sought an advanced base for Asia was the Philippines. 
The Philippines is an archipelago located in the easternmost part of the Asian continent, close to China, and a land with a good climate and abundant resources. There were few Filipino resistance forces, so Spain, which had little power, could still rule. Originally, two Islamic kingdoms, located in the southern island of Mindanao and the western Sulu Islands, joined forces with Brunei to temporarily occupy Manila and resist strongly. So Spain was also struggling to govern the Philippines. By this time, however, the two Muslim dynasties were also very weak, making it easier for Spain to control the Philippines. From the perspective of the United States, the target was just ready to catch and eat. Because the justification of liberating the Philippines from the Spanish oppressor was also plausible. Thank you for watching the video, Spanish-American War Part 2, provided by History and Current Events. I'm Mia, Rebecca Katie, Leah and Tony have contributed so far as narrators. Thank you.